Today's episode is made possible through the continuing support of Becky Brits. Thank you. Hi there, guys. Welcome back to the shop. We're here today in my shop, which is unusual for an APO video. These are the rings. Remember the rings that were all sitting kitty wampus? Uh, I said they're killing my soul and I really wish I could remove. Now you can see we got the slip rings off. They're sitting all kitty wampus way up there and that is killing my soul. Well, I got lucky in having to take the motor and everything out for the gear drive. That means that there was a big gap in the main shaft system and that allowed me the opportunity to absolutely steal the rings and bring them home. So the first thing I did was spent an inordinate amount of time pressure washing a century of schmoo off of the rings. They're not clean, but they're not dripping with funk. So, What's left is these need a bit of an overhaul. Now, what I'd like to do is completely tear them down and rebuild them from scratch. And we can do all but one part of that. Because the way they're built, first off, let's look at the situation. For the new drive motor going in, we have drive control, but we're not doing positional feedback from on the rotating shaft assembly. The reason for this is we can do it in other ways and this allows us to get rid of five of these rings which just get all that weight out of there makes life a lot easier it also means five less brushes that we have to do maintenance on which is really cool these three have to stay because these are the drive uh, this is the drive power for the blade angle motor which they don't call the collective pitch motor, but they should because it's just how I think of it. I'm a helicopter guy. So we're going to remove these five rings. And you can see the old main power leads in here that feed from the rings down into the motor are just disgusting. These are, these are horrible. They're old. They're crufty. The insulation's breaking off. They're not waterproof connections. These are old school, just vinyl connections. And we're gonna, we're gonna give this a major facelift. Okay, that, that can be brought into the current century. The other thing I'd like to do is replace the frame assemblies because they're all the same. They're not a really difficult part to machine. I'd need a milling machine to do it or a lot of free time in a drill press, but milling machine to do it. And the material wouldn't be expensive. It's about a hundred bucks worth of phenolic. I just, I'm not tooled up for it and I'm not getting paid at that level to do this. In the future, maybe I'll get the chance. But for now, we're just gonna knock the schmoo off, remove the rings and get these three leads rebuilt just completely. So it begins by let's get rid of as much weight as we can. So I'm gonna just completely remove the extra five now deprecated rings. So these, these five packages have been marked for removal. Oh, and we've got two different types of screws in here. Huh. Well, that's clearly been redone. Ah, there we go. Okay, got it. That was fun. Let's do that again. All right, so that's all the screws out. I'm gonna have to take it completely apart. Joy, the whole thing has to come apart because they're notched, so I can't take out just the five things without cutting these. And I can't cut these because the mounting for them is out on the end. <sighs> okay, I got you. I can do this. Oh, hello there. Oh, does that mean I can get? Oh, if one will go, they'll, oh yeah. Oh, that just got way easier to handle. Okay, cool. So let's pull that ring out. We'll just hang it on. Well, there's gotta be a better place. Can I just set them right here? 
Oh, yeah. That's way easier. Whoo, that arced out bad. That's arc damage. We're going all the way down. Yeah, we're going all the way down. Now, given that we're doing all new brushes and everything, the exact placement of the rings doesn't matter, but I'm gonna scribe a number in each one. All right, so I got a little stamping set here of ABC. Um, these are just little cheap Amazon stamps, and this will let me stamp the uh, a letter on the inside of these so that I at least I can put the rings back in the right orientation. I don't think it really matters, but we're going to find out in a hurry. So I'm going to go from, well, big to the bottom, skinny to the top. So that'll be A here. And this will also let me orient the rings so that I know where the, uh, the marks are. I'll know right where the center piece is. Cool, now we're all stamped with our letters and numbers and I can do the final disassembly. Ah. I am a man of grace and poise. All right, that's our last one, our last thing, our last ring. And I'm gonna put the rings right back here because that's what we're working on next. All right, now for the cleaning. But first, I'm going to go and see if I can get replacement bolts at the hardware store. So much guns. These start out impressively gross. And there's definitely an 80-20 component to it. And anywhere that's pitted will hold schmoo very well. But with nothing but some green Scotch-Brite pads, thank you, Crazy Joe, and some plain old Dawn, just, just generic gentle dish soap, Look at that. That's a hell of an improvement. Got all the carbon buildup out. And I even found, if you look down in here, there's a row of holes. I don't know why, but they're in there. That's something from its original build, I'm guessing. So we'll give this a good rinse. That one's done. Takes about half an hour to do each ring. All right, guys, we're back and we've got our rings all cleaned off. I can't de these. These are, these are just grody and there's nothing I can do about it. Like that's, I can't clean them because they're phenolic. And my concern is they're really old. And if I clean all the goo off, they might soak up so much water because it's gonna it's it's a wet process. I may have to use so much water and get those so waterlogged that they won't insulate properly, which is hilarious because these things have totally been underwater before. But I'm not gonna be the guy that screws that up. So they're just they're just gonna live like that for now. In the future, though, I may have to rebuild those, but I need a milling machine. So we have our look at these, they came out so nice. But I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom right in and show you some of the the bad spots. These have some pretty epic damage. Let's get a look at this. So that is like this here is just a dent, but that is pitting. This is where remember these are slip rings, so a carbon brush rides along the edge of them, conducting electricity in. And 
These have some pretty heavy duty pitting where they've arced and shorted and spits and sputtered and, and they're pretty bad. So I'm gonna take a moment. Now the cool thing is the brush is only right on this edge, but that bugs me. I'm gonna see if we have any major pitting on the outer circumference. And if it's anything, if it's anything that goes low, that'll just fill with carbon from a brush. If it's anything that goes high though, any little burrs sticking up, that's gonna slice away at the brush and it's gonna, you're gonna just eat up brushes. That's gonna suck. So I'm gonna use a, uh, we'll clean the aluminum out of that. Just use a generic shop file and we're gonna clean these up as best I can. You can see with your fingers a lot better than you can with your eyes on stuff like this. So just gently run a finger around it. Look for anything that, anything that feels different is what you're looking for. Cause your eyes can see a fair bit, but with your fingertips, you can feel things that are just thousandths of an inch that frequently you can't see with your eyes. So just lovingly caress the ring. Oh yeah, it's way better. Okay. All right, calling that one done. We'll set it. Uh, I need more space. That's what I need. All right. Ooh, wow. Wow. Chunky. Oh, wow. That... There's some things you can notice with your finger. That thing reads like braille. Oh my God. All right, let's. We're gonna remove some material there. Way better. And it's important to not, like I can file all I want on the sides and the, the edges. Don't file on the outer circumference unless it's to just barely remove any High spot, pokey spots. Because you put a flat spot on there, you're gonna cause problems for the, uh... wow, on the other side too. Uh, you're gonna cause problems for the brushes. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, that's two. And the last one. Oh, hi there. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, it's bad. All right, now we just gotta figure out what ring is what. Thankfully, I stamped them. I just gotta find my letters. Ah, there we go. That's A. That's B. I know this is C, but let's find the right spot and get it oriented right, so that's C. The big thing wasn't getting them in the right order. This way, it's having them in the right orientation and right spot and everything cool, so we're good there. We'll file that away. And now we get to reassemble the mainframe and then we'll do the electrical connection. Because that doesn't feel right and I'm not gonna cross thread it. So we'll take them both out. Yep, got schmoo in the hole. So I have to clean that out. That's, that's a good idea. Either those or this is an excellent application for a pipe cleaner. So I can take this, fold it over, run it right down in there and chase those threads back out. 
Oh yeah, that was a good idea. That was a way good idea. Yep, we're gonna do that on all of our threads. Cool, all right, that's way better. Ooh, this is, this is gonna suck. All right, we're gonna have to cut some things off here. I don't know how they got those in there, but we're gonna figure it out because they, they had to put it in and crimp it separate because they certainly didn't crimp them in the hole. Okay, all that's out. Those are gross, but I got to keep one to make sure that I size them properly because the new things have to fit these. That is exactly it. Okay, so we're going with the yellows. I wasn't sure if it was the yellows or the blues, but it's definitely going to be the yellows because we're doing 10 gauge. We have our old leads, so I know our wire lengths, and I'm going to make them one inch longer than the originals just to be safe. And I know the tolerances I'm working with on this, so one inch longer, we're fine. So these will be pretty quick and easy. I'm only going to do this end to start because I got to lace them through and I want to have the other end nice and neat and pretty. Okay, now that we've got those crimped, we'll tug test each one. And then we're going to bake them at 350 for a few seconds until shrinkage occurs. And these connectors will live a lot longer than the old ones did. Now these are actual marine grade heat shrinks. So they shrink down and have a little heat activated schmoo in there that forms a super duper watertight seal. Beautiful. And now all I gotta do is figure out how to get those in there. So I want that to clamp in that direction. So we're going to put it in thus. Now this is the tricky part of all of this. Can I get these connectors down in their holes? Uh, I may have to make the hole a little bit bigger because the new connector is a little bit bigger. All right, I have the drill bit that fits it and we're just going to stretch it out a little tiny bit. Just, just a tiny bit. I'm using the same size drill bit as the original and just, just wallering it out a little bit because I don't need a lot. I just need that to be able to pass on through. And the new connector is a little bit bigger than the old one. And maybe this will do and maybe it won't. No, we're catching on the sides. All right, we're going up size in the drill bit. Because it's only tight side to side. So I'm hesitant to do this by going to just a bigger drill bit because if you look here, I've got I got plenty of thickness on these two, but not here. I don't. So I just wallered that out a little bit, and we'll see if that'll be enough. Moment of truth. Try it on the biggest, deepest one first. Around the corner and. Eat it. Ah, we're in. Beautiful. Okay, so we got the first. Uh, then I know it'll work. We're okay. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Run that in. Turn it around because it has to land facing the right direction. Stuff it. Yank it. Pull it. Get it. There we go. That's two. Oh, this is beautiful. Beautiful. And the third one's easy because that one's shallow. Yeah, that one just slips right down in there. No problem. Beautiful. All right. We got all three of them down in the hole and they're not even bent to hell. That's, that's perfect. Okay, so we know we're in the right spot. We know we're coming off the right side. Now I just got to be able to see it. Get the screws in the hole. 
And once we've got, now for these, I gotta go back to the original screws because these screws are different, which is kind of sad. But we're gonna wipe off three, we're gonna find three really good ones, clean them off, and make sure that the threads are in good shape and all that jazz. And we'll drop this first one in. Okay, that one's engaged. All right, for number two, can I see it all right? Yep. And we'll get this one in. So that is our complete reassembly. Now we go through every point and double check it. But before I even move from this spot, I'm going to strip these and we'll just take the bottoms off here. Everybody likes a good strip tease. We'll take those off, grab our crimpers, and we're gonna put our new termination zone. And this finishes the new power feeds on here. And these will bring power into the motor that is located inside the central shaft. Oh yeah, that came out nice. Now we'll just cook these until golden yellow. Don't set your gourd on fire. Okay, and one last connector and then we'll double check all our bolts. On these marine ones, it's really easy to tell when you're all the way there because they turn clear. I appreciate that. Beautiful. All right, now we just double check our bolts and then we're done. Done! Look at that. It's beautiful. That's an object to art. All right, guys, so now I get to take this back to the plant and reinstall it, but that's a hell of a job there. That's uh, That took a fair bit of work. It came out beautiful. I'm super proud of it. And I have every expectation that this will work just fine for another 90 years. So thank you for hanging out with me and going through the restoration process on this giant old slip ring set. And pretty soon I get to show you this in action in an upcoming episode. You'll actually get to see this installed on the drive shaft, working with the brushes and everything deep down under a giant hydroelectric generator. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. You have fun, and as always, I'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>